What's up, Eco Nerdlings? In this podcast, we're going to be discussing alternatives to using pesticides. So, we have cultural methods. First of all, we're going to discuss physical. This includes rotating between different crops, selecting pest resistant varieties, planting pest free rootstock, and vacuuming up harmful bugs. So, this is a physical way, our approach, as an alternative to pesticides. So we also have the traditional eco-farmer. Each crop is evaluated as part of an ecological system. A control program is developed that includes a mix of cultivation, biological and chemical methods applied in a proper sequence with proper timing. So there are also biological methods. So other ways to control pests. So the biological pest control, an example would be a wasp parasitizing a gypsy moth caterpillar. So basically, we're going to employ the use of the pests, natural predators. So we might bring in a bunch of wasps to parasitize the gypsy moths, which are destroying our crops. So again, using the natural predators or parasites to control the population of pests. So we can also introduce disease or use diseased organisms such as bacteria and viruses to control the pests. We can use natural repellents such as garlic, sulfur, or parathrins, which come from chrysanthemums, to help control pests as well. We can use microbials, and these are used for insect wars, uh, especially by organic farmers. The example would be the Bacillus thuringiensis, or the Bt toxin, which is a registered pesticide sold commercially as a dry powder. Each of the thousand strains of this common soil bacteria kills a specific pest. So we also have the timing of the application. So adjusting planting times so that a, ma a major uh, insect pests either starve or get eaten by their natural predators. We have the different types of crops. So switching from vulnerable monocultures to intercropping or agroforestry, as well as polyculture, which use plant diversity to reduce losses of pests or losses to pests. Uh, we have photodegradable plastics. This is when we use plastic that degrades very slowly in the sunlight to keep weeds from sprouting between crops. We can also employ the use of pheromones. So we can actually synthesize a bug sex attractant, which is used to lure pests into traps or to attract their predators. So we also employ the use of genetic methods. So genetic engineering can be used to develop pest disease resistant crop strains. Uh, both tomato plants seen in this picture right here were exposed to a destructive caterpillar. The genetically altered plant on the right doesn't show very much damage because it had a genetic engineering which predisposed it to being resistant to those caterpillars. So resistant crops. Well, plants and animals that are resistant to certain pests, insects, fungi, as well as diseases can be developed. It can take 10 to 20 years to actually perfect it in the plant that we're using. And genetic engineering is now helping to speed up this process through development of transgenic crops, meaning we're taking a gene from one organism and implanting it into another. Now there's a whole other slew of issues that go on with that. Uh, one of the biggest debates is allergies. So if we take a gene from a peanut and we insert it into corn, and that corn is used to make the shell of a taco. And someone who is deathly allergic to a peanut eats the taco. Are they going to have some type of allergic reaction? Those are some of the debates that are taking place right now. We're not quite sure what's going to happen in the future, but there's a lot of research going on with genetic engineering and genetically modified organisms. So we can also employ the use of sterilization. So males of some insect species can actually be raised in the laboratory, sterilized by radiation or chemicals, and then released into an infested area to mate very unsuccessfully with fertile wild females. So basically, the reproduction takes place, but we don't produce offspring. So the males are sterilized rather than females because the male insects mate several times, whereas the female insects only mate once. So what can we as a society do to help reduce our exposure to pesticides? Well, first of all, you can actually grow some of your own food using organic methods. You could buy organic food. You could wash and scrub all fresh fruits, vegetables, as well as wild foods that you pick. 
You can eat less or no meat at all. And if you eat meat, you should trim the fat from it because that's where a lot of the toxins are going to be stored. Well, I hope you learned some of the alternatives to pesticide use. If you need to rewatch this video lecture or any others, you can find them on my website at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.